We'll, we'll turn our Bibles to two places today. One, Philippians 4.19, and another one, Psalms 46.10. So, Philippians 4.19 and Psalms 46.10. title of the message is Learn to Stay Still. Learn to Stay Still. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's go to Psalms 46.10. Psalms 46.10. The Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted yeah. in the earth. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Amen. These two verses are very famous verses, and they are favorite verses for many Christians out there for one reason or the other. I mean, one is a promise. You know, if we're looking at Philippians 4.19, the Bible says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that's one of the best promises in the Word of God. Your needs will be provided. And that's what God says. And as a man, you need certain things you definitely need. And God will provide it for you, especially when you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Man needs salvation. I mean, every man in the world needs a salvation. Without salvation, you will burn in hell for eternity. And if you have gotten that salvation by trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the greatest need you ever needed that was met. Amen. And when it comes to having your needs met, there's a second part to it. You have to be thankful for your needs that has been met. It's without saying that salvation it is the greatest gift from God. However, many times you forget about salvation on a daily basis, whether it be because of you know, your work, your health, your wealth, education, your social standing. So these things get in the way. But once you forget about salvation, the greatest need that you had that God has provided, what happens is that rest of your needs or rest of your wants and rest of everything that's in your life becomes very, very gray. Becomes, it's as if you're trying to look for something in the water. What happens if water has mud underneath and then you step on it? You lose focus, it's not clear anymore. So as a Christian, when you lose that thanksgiving for your salvation, which is the greatest need that you and I ever needed, and you stop thinking about it, you start giving God thanks about it, you're just like in that muddy water. And in that muddy water, if you're looking for something, you can't really look for it. It's hard. 
And how long does it take for some of those things to settle down? It takes a long time. And if there's a lot of waves coming along, then it's going to take longer and longer and longer. The reason you're full of want, the reason you're always unthankful, the reason you're never satisfied, the reason you're never happy is because you don't think about the needs that God has provided for you. When someone realizes that my needs are met, they should be happy. They should be satisfied. They should be thankful, grateful. They should live a joyful Christian life. When you feel that your needs are not met, that's when you start thinking. That's when you start complaining. Think about Israelites. Their needs were always met. God provided their needs. But their idea started changing. Their thinking started changing. They're like, you know what? This is not my need anymore. I need something else. I need this and that. I need what the heathens have. I need what those, you know, all those idol worshipers have. And you have to think about it. When it comes to your own life, what are your needs in your life? A lot of times, you ask God for your wants, which is completely out of the question. God's not going to provide your wants. And if he doesn't provide your wants, you start complaining. You're complaining and complaining and complaining. As a Christian, it is hard to fathom that you complain to God constantly and for all the wrong reasons. If you're living in sin, you're going to complain. Whatever comes your way, you're not going to be satisfied. Do you know why all these wealthy people, they're never satisfied and they continue to try to accumulate more wealth and wealth and wealth? Why? Because they don't realize that their needs are met. So they think that they need more and more and more. When that consumes your life, you can't have a normal life. You start sacrificing or you start neglecting just a normal part of your life. Many people lose their health because they don't recognize that their needs are met. Many people lose relationship. Many people lose family. Why? Because they think that their own needs are not met. They're, they strive and strive and strive. So when you think about your own Christian life, are you really thankful for your salvation? You have to learn to stay still. I mean, that's a concept in the Word of God. Many people, many forefathers of faith had to learn. I mean, Apostle Paul had to learn the hard way. Every single person that you know of who has been saved, they have to learn to stay still. Just like Psalms 46 verse 10 says, it comes with patience, it comes with long suffering. So when you look at your own life, do you stay still? Or are you the type of person who has to have it right of the way? You have to have it. You know, it's like, God, I need this right now. But when you say, I need this, he said in God's time. A lot of times, you don't think about God's time. You only think about your own time. As a human being, you and I are very selfish. So we continue to think about what we need. If you and I were to say that I need a million bucks right now, is that a true statement? I mean, do you really need a million bucks? Or do you say, I need $10 million. Why do you need it for, right? Because I need to have a bigger house. I need to get a better car. I need to get better stuff. That's not a need. That's your want. Right. As a Christian, you always have to understand and you have to judge yourself. Am I talking about my needs or am I talking about my wants? When you start thinking about wants, you continue to act the way you are right now 
living as an unthankful Christian. Man needs salvation, and God gave that salvation. And men also need comfort. You and I, we get in trouble, we're in sorrow. They call September mental health months. You know, every month have some kind of you know, reason to be a month, right? And September is mental health months. I mean, it's better than many of the other months, you know, what they stand for, right? Mental health, why, why do people go crazy? Or why do people become so unstable in their life? Why? Many times, it's because they're not getting what they want, so they go crazy. Many times, they're not thankful for what they have. When all their needs are met, they're not thankful for it. And as Christians, devil starts attacking you. Hey, you're going to heaven, and that almighty God should give you this, should give you that job. He hasn't given it to you right? Man, that's not a good God, right? That's not a good Lord. And they start tempting you. And you fall into that temptation. And then you start complaining, God, you know, you know I need this. My family need this. How come I don't get it? And then you become a person. Instead of being grateful and thankful, you become a person just like Israelites. Keep on murmuring. Murmuring to God. And when you murmur, that leads to what? It leads to sin, obviously. Complainers usually aren't the most holy people out there. And think about all the complainers that you have dealt in your life, including yourself. When you are complaining instead of being thankful to, say, your parents, what comes off of it? Do you think your parents are happy okay, when your kid is like complaining to you about a bunch of stuff, right? I mean, obviously, if you're not living godly, yeah, that's a legitimate complaint. But when it comes to, you know what? I need a better phone, you know? I need a better phone. I need a better computer. And I need a better gadget. And I need a better camera. I need a better car, you know? We need a better house. And now you start adding we, so because you want your parents to feel the same as you. And then what happens? Maybe your parents get angry at you, your parents are not pleased, and they become self-dejected. You know, oh man, I want to really, really give good things to my children, but I don't have means to give to them, but they're still complaining to me over and over and over. In that case, what's that going to create? It's going to create mental issues. If you're a parent, and if your child is constantly asking you for something that you can't provide, how would you feel? Right? I mean, the kids, they don't know better. But you know, because of all their selfishness and pride and what they see other people have, they're constantly asking you. They can't stay still. You know, they don't understand that their parents want what's best for them, and they have to sometimes wait. And if they don't wait and they start murmuring and complaining and give fits to you, how do you feel? As a parent, you feel bad. You feel angry. You feel like, man, I haven't been the best parent that like I should. As a kid, if you're like that person, imagine, as a Christian, you're acting just like that kid to God. God, I need this. I need this. I want you to give me this. Give me this. Give me that. Give me that. But God is different. God is not like you and I. I mean, God knows what's best for you, and he'll never change. He's only going to give you what's best for you, whether it be good or bad. You need spanking? God's going to give it to you. If you don't need spanking and if you need something good, God's going to give it to you. When, if you understand God's character and personality, then shouldn't you try to follow and emulate how God is? 
God is never in a hurry in your life. God is never in a hurry in my life. That's why the Bible says, be still. Be, be still and know that I am God. Be still. How many times have you guys gotten into trouble because you did not stay still? Probably many times, right? When there's an argument without waiting to get the facts, sometimes you start arguing back. And a lot of times, people's relationships get ruined because one or the other or both parties do not stay still. Someone says, okay, hey, I heard from somebody that you said this about me. And instead of you know, waiting and staying still, you go with your first instinct. I believe that person 1,000%. You done me wrong, right? You, know, you apologize to me you know, or our relationship is over. Or sometimes you feel like you know better than anybody else. So you're like, okay, I'm going to commit to do this. I know, I know, and I know better than anybody else. And then what does that lead to? I mean, a lot of times they lead to destruction, punishment, sorrow, and regrets. You can avoid many, many regrets in your life if you just learn to stay still. You need to learn to stay still. Then how can you stay still? I mean, number one is you have to pray. The reason many times you don't stay still is because you don't pray. You just don't spend time with God. Why do people fall into temptation? Why do Christians backslide? I mean, definition of backslide is what? Out of fellowship with God. The reason you can't stay still is because you're out of fellowship with God. Why? Because you don't spend time with him. You don't pray. You don't pray enough. You're like, oh, yeah, I try to pray as best as I could. You know, what is your best, by the way? You and I could always say that me praying 30 seconds each day is my best. Because that's my opinion. But is that really your best? You have to be honest with yourself. If you really want to stay still, you have to judge yourself. You have to constantly judge yourself. Because you're, you're, you yourself cannot stay still. So you have to judge yourself, and you have to confess your sins to the Lord and get right with the Lord. That's how you could stay still. It's like a dog, right? You have to train a dog. If you want that dog to learn to stay patient, when they want that treat, you have to have him sit and stay there for a while. If you constantly give it to him, whenever they run up to you, whenever they want it, then what's going to happen? They will never learn to stay still. In your life, in order for you to stay still, you have to pray, and you have to pray on your knees, and you have to just stay there for a while. Your prayer cannot be five seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. Your prayer life has to increase. I mean, at first, it's really hard, right? You feel sleepy. You don't know what to pray. Your legs hurting, and you just tend to be like, oh, I'm done, you know? But think about all the folks and all the brethren who are used by God and who had great testimonies. They know how to stay still. Why? They learn. How? By praying. Just praying and praying and praying. You know, prayer is missing in your life. That's for sure. If you want to stay still and you feel like, oh, man, you know, God is not answering my prayer. Nobody's helping me out. 
my f- life is falling apart, you know, my health is not there, right? You know, financial problems, relationship problems. What do you do? Do you go to your psychologist? I mean, do you call that 1-800 number? Or do you go to those anonymous meetings? Before you do any of those junk, you go to the Lord. Like you, you just literally need to stay on your knees and just spend time with him. Just a correlation. If you're a person who can pray and who spends a lot of time with the Lord, you're a person who can stay still for a long time. You will learn to be still longer and longer. But if you spend such a little amount of time with the Lord, maybe you don't even spend any time with the Lord on a daily basis, I guarantee you are not going to stay still. You are that person when Lord says, right, okay, just stay where you are in your life. Whether it's your job, you know, whether it's whatever it may be in your relationship, just stay where you are. Since you never spend time with the Lord, since you don't pray like you should, at first opportunity, you're like, you just move. And that's when people make huge mistakes in their life, financially, job-wise, relationship-wise. Can you imagine some of those Decisions are life-changing decisions. Marriage. You marry a wrong person, you're stuck forever. Right. Unless you're going to divorce, right? I mean, as a Christian, I mean, unless they're dead or, you know, they leave from you or whatnot, I mean, you're not going to just divorce for personality differences, right? Or, you know, many excuses that people give, you know, irreconcilable differences. Right. What are those, right? right? It's just that they just can't, you know, they don't have patience for each other or, you know, they just got bored of that relationship. They just can't, if you stay still and wait it for the Lord, then you, I guarantee you, you have a better relationship and marriage. Job situation, do your best. Do your best and don't compromise anything and wait for the Lord to give you the right job. In the meanwhile, the Lord's been providing your need, but you've been wanting extra money to buy certain stuff. You know, it's, it's, everything is from you. And when certain job offer comes, without even thinking about how it's going to affect your family and your ministry and your relationship with God, you just take it because it's going to give me extra 30% income. Not knowing what was waiting for you. You got to miss church and there's a very good possibility that you'll get fired because they're just looking to hire somebody, but you know, they're going to downside eventually. And which happens quite often in many companies. Then you thought you got your financial freedom, but in reality, because you didn't stay still, you lost it all. And when you make that kind of mistake, what's going to happen? It's on you. You reap what you sow. Many times Christians go through many rippings, right? You have sown so many bad seeds. And all this happened because why? You did not stay still. You just don't know how to stay still. And like I said, as point number one, if you don't pray, like Bible says, pray always. If you don't pray all the time, then you are going to not stay still. And you're going to commit these horrible sins. If I stay home and don't move around, I'll probably sin less, right? As long as, you know, I mean, there's all their temptations out there. But if you move, there's some opportunities for sin that you're going to commit. I mean, 
You could go to wrong places many times. Right? Instead of spending time with the Lord in prayer, you go to different places, guarantee you're going to commit some sins that you regret. A lot of times for the rest of your life. But, okay, three in the morning, you wake up, and you know, it's a great time to study the Bible, read the Bible, or pray. But you're like, you know what? I need to, I need some excitement in my life. So I'm just going to, you know, cruise, you know, West Hollywood. I'll go like, I don't know, you know, let me check out South Central. Uh, let me just go some places, right? Yeah, because I got nothing better to do. And then you, you drive by and then they say, hey, who's this fool, you know? Because they don't sleep, you know, nighttime. A lot of bad activities go on. And then you get shot, and you're in the hospital, and you're blaming God. God, you know, what did I do wrong, you know? When you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, because you're wasting time, because you're just trying to fulfill the lust of your flesh and your desire, then what's going to happen? Bad things are going to happen. When you have that kind of desire to do something other than spend time with the Lord, that's a great sign that you need to spend time with the Lord. When your flesh tells you, you know what, we have something better to do, then that's when you have to spend time with the Lord. Because you and I have a lot of free time. Believe it or not, if you sleep like little less, you're going to have more time. Right? I mean, if you're sleeping less than four hours, I don't know, you should sleep more. If you're sleeping less than six hours, maybe a little more. But if you're sleeping more than six hours, you know, I mean, nine hours. I mean, they have a sleeping cycle. You know, six hours is good. If you pass that, I think they say go to nine hours. So if you're sleeping six hours, I mean, that's good. Again, when it's time for you to pray, what do you do instead? A lot of times you just sleep. Or you just sleep. Like, I'm too tired. It's three in the afternoon. I'm too tired, you know. It's five in the evening. Okay, I'm going to take a nap. I'm at, I'm at fault. Sometimes, like, you know, good amount of napping hours is what? Less than one hour. That's like power nap for 20 minutes is good for you, right? But you sleep for like three hours. You come home at three, and then you wake up at seven. And then you go, where did all my time go? I don't, I, I don't have time to spend with you, Lord. And then you get busy with your life. You want to learn to stay still? Number one, you have to pray. I mean, it is something that you and I have to hear on a daily basis. Because you and I will never pray enough. If you say, I pray enough, then you are the person that who needs the most prayer. It's just like someone says, you know, I don't sin. I mean, you're, you're the person who sins the most, right? You know, and you're like, I don't do this. A lot of times when someone says, I don't do this, do that, either you're doing it right now or you're going to eventually do it. So that's why you should never say those kind of statements either, right? And that's why when I, you know, I know how to stay still. I wait on the Lord. Don't say those things, right? Because the Lord's going to test you on that spot. Okay. And when those tests come, many times you're going to fail. But if you're spending so much time with the Lord, again, you have to be balanced. You know, don't go home starting today and you don't spend time with your family and you're just praying, you know, eight hours a day. You know, don't do that either. You have to be stay balanced. When it's time for you to pray, you have to pray. And don't ask me when is the right time to pray. You know your life. When you have that time to pray, then pray. Don't expect me to say, okay, it's 8.59, John. It's time for you to pray. No. It's your own spiritual life and your own relations with Lord Jesus Christ. But if you don't have any, any Remember of, remembrance of spending time with the Lord in a significant matter, then obviously you're not right with the Lord. Huh? 
If husband and, uh, husband and wife don't talk to each other, there's something wrong with that relationship. What is prayer about? You're talking to the Lord, right? You're having that fellowship. You're having that relationship. If you value your physical relationship, if you value your family relationship so much, and you talk to each other because you know it's important, I mean, why don't you talk to the Lord? I mean, Lord's always there. It's you and I who's getting further and further away from the Lord. He's there. He's just waiting. He's waiting for you to talk to him. But how often do you talk to him? People who spend a lot of time with the Lord, they have... They learn to have patience like Job, right? They do. Even if there are sufferings that comes their way, they wait on the Lord. Even if there are calamities that come in their life, they wait on the Lord. They don't become haste and stop blaming God for everything. They just wait on the Lord. When those things do happen, when... Unfortunate things do happen in your life. Do you go to the Lord in prayer? If you do, then I know that you're learning to stay still. But if you don't, many Christians, just because you're Christian, doesn't mean that you're holy, right? They go drinking. They grab a beer. They grab wine because they say Jesus drank it. You know, give that kind of excuse, stupid excuses. I'm like, okay, you know, this thing will relieve me of my pain and my suffering. Or they're just fine and trying to do something that's thrilling in their life to alleviate that suffering. I mean, you might be that person. If you smoke in the past, probably you'll smoke again if you're not careful. If you drank in the past, probably you're going to drink again because if you're not careful. If you gamble in the past, you're going to gamble again if you're not careful. If you did drugs in the past, you got to do drugs again if you're not careful. If you don't spend time with the Lord and if you don't stay still, then you're going to commit those sins again. I mean, it's a guarantee. You're not better than your flesh. You're not better than the devil. You're not better than the world. You are not going to overcome any of those things. When they attack, you can't stay still. You're going to move. They're so enticing. You're like that fish. You see that worm, but you don't see the hook. And then you bite on it. And it's too late. And then they're going to reel you in. And they're going to eat you. They're going to finish you as their meal. And then they'll throw bones away. So if you don't stay still, and if you don't pray, what's going to happen? You're going to go all the way in your sins. Every sin that you ever commit, you're going to just go all the way. Just simple as that. That's human, human psychology. Once you start, you're going to finish. There's no in-between, literally. Once you start, you might not finish it today, but you're going to finish it eventually. Even then, Lord gives you grace. From, but from my own experience and hearing other Christians' experience, you never stop. You just can't stop. Because you're weak. I'm weak. No, you're, you're less than nothing. Then do you expect to stay still when the Lord's telling you to stay still because He is God when you don't spend time with Him? When your life is not exemplified by prayer? Does your family think you're a prayer warrior? I mean, I should ask your husband, I should ask your wife, I should ask your children, right? Because you live with them. I mean, do you pray at all? 
And it can't be like, oh yeah, when we eat meal, we pray. I mean, that's given. I mean, if you don't pray, you know, for, for your meals, you know, something's wrong with you, right? Like when you're driving, and you know, th those are given. I mean, as Christians, you have to do. But however, outside of those things that you do on a regular basis, I mean, do you pray? Did your wife ever see you pray? Not 30-second prayers, again, not 30-second, one-minute prayer. Did your wife ever wake up early in the morning and saw you on your knees and praying? Did your husband ever see your, you as a wife ever pray on your knees early in the morning? Do you, I mean, do your children ever see you pray on your knees early in the morning? I mean, Lord prayed early in the morning. I mean, do you want to be like the Lord? I mean, do you want to do what the Lord did? Start with prayer first thing in the morning. I don't know what time you wake up. You could wake up at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I mean, it's up to you. But after, first thing you should do when you wake up, right? You have to pray. That's how you start. That's how you could stay still for the rest of the day when you need to stay still. If you don't do that, then definitely you're living a backslid in life. You're not going to see comfort. Right? You're not comforted. You're full of worry, full of complaint. If you don't go to the Lord and spend time with the Lord first thing in the morning, there's no way the rest of your day is going to end well. Sometimes you get deceived by the devil. Even though you had a horrible day, you think you had a great day because you are full of sinful pleasure all day. And they're like, oh, man, I had a great day today. But when you rewind it, what really happened? I committed this sin. I committed that sin. And then, you know, I had a lot of thrill, a lot of, I had a lot of pleasure today. You don't realize it. And you don't stop. You continue to do it until the Lord has to stop you from doing it. That's why it is very, very important that your sins, you have to judge your sins on a daily basis. And in order to do that, simple, go to the Lord in prayer. And when you go to the Lord in prayer, you're going to stay longer and longer. Just you confessing your sins should take about an hour of prayer, literally. Because I know you and I are not saints, like, quote, unquote. I mean, of course, we're saved, okay? For doctrinal reasons, you know, if you accept the Christ as your Lord and Savior, you and I are saints, okay? <laughs> or those smart Alex out there. Right. <laughs> but you and I have so many sins that we commit on a daily basis if we truly want to get right with the Lord, you and I will be spending a lot of time with the Lord. And that's going to help you learn to stay still. It's like, I can't get away with this sin. So I'm going to, I have to, I have to get right with the Lord. And that requires time, patience, long suffering. And I'm going to learn to stay still. If your prayer for your confessing your sin is five seconds, ten seconds, something's wrong with you. Lord God, I'm sorry for committing sins yesterday. I'm committing for committing, I'm sorry for committing all these sins today. Please forgive me. I never want to do it again. That's it? When you have children, okay, so they broke the glass, you know, they made a mess in the house. They disobeyed you, and they committed or they done like 10 different things that broke your rule. And your child goes, Dad, I'm sorry for what I've done. Done. Okay, if you're a dad and you're like, okay, son, it's okay, you know, accept it. What is things going to happen to the kid? He's going to do it again and again and again. Dad, Mom, I'm sorry. The reason that you speak with them is you're trying to explain to them what they've done wrong so that they won't do it again. Amen.
how are you ever going to become a better Christian? How are you ever going to learn to stay still and wait on the Lord unless you get right with the Lord every single day? Because many of you, I guarantee, don't really spend too much time about your sin issues, judging your sins, confessing your sins. If you did, I mean, you'd be a better Christian today than yesterday or day before. But are you a better Christian today than yesterday, day before? Are you a better Christian than last year? Man, shouldn't you be improving as a Christian instead of, you know, decreasing and backsliding more and more and more? If you can spend a lot of time in the things that you love to do, that will show who you really are. If that thing that you love to do is spending more time with the Lord in prayer, that shows who you are. Then you and I can actually gauge our spiritual state today. Man, why am I always in a hurry when it comes to things of the Lord or things of my life? Why do I always am in a haste trying to get this, get that? Why am I always in a hurry when it comes to dealing with my family, my life, and everything. Why do I want it now, 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 all the time? Why? Because you don't spend time with the Lord. Simple as that. When you spend time with the Lord, He's going to teach you long-suffering. When you spend time with the Lord, He's going to teach you patience. When you spend time with the Lord, you're going to be still. You're going to learn how to stay still. Obviously, there are moments where you have to move, but... As you grow older and older and older, there are many things where it doesn't happen right away. Then what are you going to do? Lord said he's going to provide all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you need to pay bills, he's going to pay for I mean, he's going he's to provide your need, right? If you need a revival in your life, it's going to give you an opportunity to get the revival in your life, right? If you need certain things, the Lord's going to provide it for you, and you believe that. But when it comes to just staying still, it's missing in your life because instead of spending time with the Lord, you're doing other things. You know, as I look back in my life, I'm like, man, I've wasted a lot of time, you know, gotten into trouble because I didn't stay still. And if I could go back, I'll replace those times when I did other things with spending time with the Lord. And that would have really, really saved me from a lot of heartaches and troubles. But am I going to continue that pattern? No. I mean, that's the dumbest thing to do. When you know it's wrong, and when you know what kind of result you're going to get and you still do it, that's a dumb thing, right? right? If you know that if you touch that hot gas stove, right, and you're going to get burned, and you got burned before, but you continue to touch it, that's dumb. That's being stupid, right? right? And Lord has told you and me, okay, you, are you going to still continue to burn yourself? I mean, it's hot out there. It's like running on the concrete ground, you know, without a shoes. You know, like three in the afternoon, just burning your feet, right? You know it's wrong, but you still do it. Because you have that thrill and excitement and the pleasure, which your flesh craves. How long are you going to let your flesh and the world and the devil control you. How long are you going to live in this state, a backslidden state? Just remember, you're out of fellowship with God, then you're backslidden. Don't, there's no other explanation. You don't need like a whole detailed summary of the Bible. You don't spend too much time with the Lord in prayer, you're out of fellowship. Simple as that. How long? I know it's more than one minute. 
five minutes, 10 minutes, right? Then spend time with the Lord. Then you learn to stay still. You learn to be patient. You learn to have that long suffering. You learn to wait on the Lord. And you won't be complaining to the Lord. Instead, you'll be grateful. You'll be thankful. You'll start thinking about the things that God has given you instead of things that you want. As we go through this heat wave, starting with salvation, how God has given us comfort and assurance and how he gives us wisdom to do right thing at the right time, you and I have to learn to stay still. You and I have to spend more time with the Lord. You and I have to keep that and make that our priority. Like number one priority, right? Number one, it's not like something that we do it when we feel like it. It's like something that we have to do on a daily basis. I am going to spend time with the Lord first thing in the morning, last thing in the morning, and everything in between. Then you and I will have that testimony just like Psalm 4610. Wouldn't it be the, one of the best testimonies in your life? Right? I learned to stay still because I know who God is. Instead of, man, I, didn't, I, didn't, I never learned to stay still and I got into a lot of trouble. This is where I am. Learn to stay still. Let's pray.